Greetings, and welcome to Quantum Healing with Candace. I'm your host, Candace Craw Goldman. This program was created to assist humans in this rapidly changing world, while it's expanding into new realms, new ways of thinking and being. It is based upon the foundation of the late, great Dolores Cannon's work, and our continued contact with her from beyond the veil. So thank you, Dolores, for continuing to encourage us to explore new directions. Also, thanks to Greg Prescott and Michelle Walling at In5D.com for making this show possible. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my wonderful supporters of the show and this work and all of my In5D friends, my New Earth Journey friends, my Facebook friends, QHHT practitioners, and of course, clients. With humanity's new understanding and acceptance of the quantum world and the role that consciousness plays in shaping both our individual and our collective reality, we have plenty of subject material for this show. I'm a full-time practitioner of Dolores' hypnosis method and had the honor and distinct privilege of working with and alongside of her for several years. You can find out more about my practice of quantum healing and my consulting and coaching services at NewEarthJourney.com. And I'd like to mention I'm now offering Quantum Healing Meditation Process, a personalized and completely unique to you downloadable MP3 file. Call or email me about details. And lastly, before we get started tonight, for those of you looking for a practitioner of Dolores Cannon's method of quantum healing, or for those who have trained with Dolores in the past, take note of this website. Dolores Cannon, QHHT.com. There you will find an easy-to-use photo listing of practitioners, their blogs, YouTubes, and published books. And also for the serious practitioner of Dolores' method, her original Quantum Healing Support Forum, which has eight years of abundant resources. And again, you can find all of that at Dolores Cannon, QHHT.com. This show supports those who are dedicated members of our support forum community. Hi, everyone. It is the 7th of September, and this is Quantum Healing with Candace, and I am so excited about today's show. Uh, Today we have with us the one and only Pamela Carolyn, and Pamela has become very important to the Dolores Cannon community of practitioners and uh, in the metaphysical and spiritual community of the world, as a matter of fact, and her popularity is growing and growing. And today we're going to talk all about our favorite subject, of course, which is Dolores Cannon. So I want to welcome you, Pamela. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Nice to be here today. So excited to, to see you. And um, spend this time with you. Uh, You have become such an important part of my life, both professionally and personally, and I enjoy every minute of time that I get to share with you. But I am particularly excited about today because even though you and I, um, in groups, uh, sometimes on on your Facebook page or in in other ways, we touch upon some, some of the messages that Dolores Cannon uh, has has given you and has given me and we compare notes but I don't know that we've ever actually done this which is have an entire conversation all about you and her but before we even get to some of that I would like for you to tell our audience who may not have um, had the pleasure of meeting you or watching you before, tell us a little about yourself and how you got into this and what a clear conduit channel is, and a little bit about you first, if you would. Yes. Um, the honor is all mine. Thank you so much for having me. Again, I am blessed. Um, I am a clear conduit channel, as you mentioned. I've been channeling since age five, well, if that's as long as I can remember. Who knows what happened prior to then? Um, what a clear conduit channel means is strictly that ego doesn't get involved. Um, I have to set myself aside and I operate in two different ways. I am a trans channel. That's T-R-A-N-S channel. And I am a trance channel, T-R-A-N-C-E. So the differences thereof incorporate trance channeling means with channel. So in other words, I'm still fully conscious of what I'm doing and what's being said. 
it's not standard mediumship where I'm looking, you know, although I do see beings outside of myself, many times this means the being will step through me momentarily, speak for me. Um, I have complete control over it, but I am an allowance of it and trust of it. So this means I get to choose who comes in. They pop in and they pop out and they pop in and they pop out. So I'm very clear about it when it happens. I'll say, okay, she's saying this and then it'll just come through, you know, and then I'll, and then I'm like, okay, back to me now. <laughs> so I'm very clear about, you know, how that works. And with trance channeling, when I do that, I just step completely aside, go into a very meditative trance and allow that being to come through for a significant amount of time. And then the being will release me or I will release the being and then come out of it. So there's two different ways that I operate. Um, yeah, I started at age five. I had a spiritual visit from an angelic deity um, who touched me here on my forehead um, right here in the third eye area and said, now you see, touched me on my ears simultaneously and said, now you hear on my heart and said, now you feel and here at the top of my head on my crown and said, now, you know, from that moment, my world opened up and everything has been different since then. I, um, and the reason why I love Dolores Cannon so much is because I learned that she has a unique technique, you know, where she can go into all levels of the soul and one of my techniques is called soul essence channeling. And when I determined that she was um, able to tap into the subconscious, it was very fascinating to me because so can I. <laughs> um, so I love that. I love to channel living beings in that way where I can tap into all la layers of their conscious and subconscious. And when I began talking to her, she liked the way that I worked. I liked the way that she worked. And we just began to learn from each other. Well, wow, I want to get into that uh, in more detail for sure, but um, I want to back up and ask you some really basic questions. So before all of this happened and you started having this uh, amazing relationship with Dolores Cannon, when did you first even hear of her name or know who she was? When, when did her, you know, her personality come into your awareness? At what, you know, what point was that? When she left this world. Um, in physical form, at least. <laughs> she's still very much with us. That's why I'm here today. Um, <laughs> she's persistent in continuing her work, even in spirit form. But when she left her body, um, many people in my spiritual community were just really loving her and memorializing her so respectfully. And so many people in my spiritual community just adore her. And they said, can you channel her? And I said, well, sure, I can ask. You know, um, I'll see what happens. It's not like I just say, oh, I'm going to channel this being and they come through. I make sure that there's an immense amount of time and space and respect for the spirit of that being. Um, she wasn't ready. She did not spend very much time in spirit form. She went almost immediately to what she calls the resting place. So when my community was saying, please channel her, I was like, well, yeah, but I have a feeling that she's, you know, in the resting place and that she is, and if someone's in the resting place, I give them respect and peace and rest and time, you know, to be able to be ready um, if they even choose to come out in my lifetime. So I wasn't sure if I would be able to or not. And I reached out and tried to call her in and she answered me because this is prior to when she went into the resting place. She spent a little bit of time before then talking to some of her practitioners and things like that. So for that whole year, she was talking to people for a little bit, you know, maybe about six months or so. And, um, and she talked to me and, and she said, um, I don't really talk to channels. Uh, I just don't do that. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean you don't do that? <laughs> right. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't do that? It's obvious that I'm talking to you. And she said, yeah, you're listening. I said, no, I'm talking to you. And she was like, yeah, you're listening and you're repeating what I'm saying. And she was just immensely resistant to the idea of what I could do. And she goes, okay, I get that you're going to do what you're going to do, but I need to rest. Please respect that and come back to me later. So I gave her a, a while. You know, I gave her the rest of that year and just let her rest before I tried again. And then when I did try again, um, she pretty much wouldn't let me touch any of her work. She said, don't go read the convoluted universe. Don't go read, you know, the three waves of volunteers. Don't go read any of that. Cause I had heard about it. And I said, do you want me to, out of respect, do you want me to learn your work? And she goes, no, because that would permeate what I'm about to teach you now, which is immensely different. And she's, her personality was very clear 
very direct. She has a bit of a wit, like a dry sense of humor. <laughs> she is very authentic and raw with me. She does not let me get away with much in terms of if I try to uh, argue my theories or try to get her to understand where I'm coming from. She observes me and I can't really tell her anything. She just observes my work and says, oh, I can see why that worked now. I can see why that didn't work when I was alive and I can see why it's different now. And she just sat there and just learned from me and I learned from her. That's, that's a really great point. And I don't want to stop you, but, but wow, I want to put like parentheses around something that you just said about it didn't work when she was alive, but it's going to work now. I, the hairs on my arms are standing straight up because this is so important. This is so, so, so important about what's happening now on the planet and what's happening now with Dolores's work. Uh, but I still would like, uh, I, I want to ask a couple more questions because I know my practitioners are there. There's so much wanting to know about this. So when you want to contact Dolores or anybody, uh, I imagine you go to a quiet place and you just, think about them or can you tell us a little bit about how that works? I mean, how's that work for you? Well, she and I have been caught in contacting each other for so long that mostly it's she contacting I, it's not vice versa, you know, unless I have a specific question. Um, she is very persistent. I don't have to try to contact her. She shows up exactly when she wants to. <laughs> <laughs> so with her, um, I'm so used to doing it. Initially when I wanted to contact her, I would just focus on her energy via the voice frequency, the vocal frequency of her name. Frequency is what calls in a soul. You know, and being that I'm a frequency-based being, all I have to do is say her name. Um, and that's how I initially contacted her. And I visualized a picture of her in her mind, you know, in my mind. But once that connection was made, then she began to just show up on her own accord uh, with strong volition. <laughs> This is, so, this is so humorous to me, knowing Dolores the way I did in real life. <laughs> She can be so strong and so forceful and so so direct and she takes yes. prisoners and she's, you know, and she takes no baloney and she's, she's very matter of fact and she is very funny sometimes. So, um, so to just kind of recap this, um, at first, you know, you basically knocked on Dolores's door where she is on the other side of the veil and she kind of went, eh, kind of busy, kind of resting. And then later you kind of went to see again, you know, if she was interested in speaking and she was a little bit, and then the tables have sort of turned. Is that correct? I mean, she's knocking on your door a whole lot more now. Isn't that right? Yeah, pretty much. And then that's how I met you because I said, once she began to tell me what she wanted me to do and why she was contacting me and why she was there every single day, and I, boop, I'm not exaggerating. It is every single day. She yeah. has a specific purpose with me and with you. And she's not going to let either of us rest with that in our human form. We're going to work tirelessly until she comes through that purpose. And that's what it's all about. And that's just how she is. And at least from my perspective of her, she will not cease until her work is out there in this new form. So new form being the operative words. So um, yeah, the, the tables did turn and she's insistent. Yeah. That's, um, that's just kind of astonishing um, to hear. So, um, so let's get right down to like one of the number one questions. So when I first heard, and somebody just sent me a link, actually my really good friend, Melena, who I'm sure is gonna be part of all of this, by the way, <laughs> but that's a, an aside. Um, she sent me a link and she said, have you seen this? This lady's channeling Dolores Cannon. And I mean, my, my instant reaction was, kind of like a, a guard dog or something. I was like, what? And I mean, I was all, I was all closed off and doubtful. And, and I was, I was a little bit incredulous. And anybody who has studied with Dolores and spent the time with her, like, um, like I did and some other people, um, you know, who are lucky enough to spend time with her. I cannot tell you how many times we've heard her say, I'm not going to let anyone ever channel me when I go. I mean, she just, she used to say that with great uh, insistence and, 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 you know, absolute conviction in her classes. So, of course, you know, we listen to our teacher. And when somebody comes along who says they were channeling Dolores Cannon, although at the same time, we're all saying we keep hearing her. <laughs> so, you know, but when we heard somebody outside of our community, 
was channeling her, I mean, you had a whole wave of people going, uh uh, just no way, right? And I remember so, like, the, the leak came over and I'm starting to watch it. And I don't, I mean, I'm like three feet from my computer with my arms crossed watching you like this. Like, let's just see what she's gonna do here. And I, I, wish, some, I wish somebody would have had a camera on me because. You know, after a while, my arms kind of came down, and I started listening. I'm like, well, that sounds like Dolores, and yep, that sounds like Dolores, too, you know, and I'm listening to all of this, and I'm, I'm just amazed, but I, and then, you know, we talked to our mutual friend, um, Michelle Walling, and she then had talked to you, and, and Michelle just kept saying, she's the real deal, she's the real deal, and I'm still like, you know, I don't know, I, I've met some mediums, and so far, no offense to any of you out there, people. No offense. So far, I really haven't, I haven't been gung ho about the whole idea. It's it's it, it's hit or miss, or I don't feel real good about some of the stuff. I mean, just that world. Even though I'm in the land of woo woo, um, that world was always kind of compartmentalized over here in something that I didn't spend a lot of time. Uh, dealing with talking about or talking about with other mediums although I absolutely you know even myself I can hear some things so I understood it existed not till I met you you change you changed the whole game for me and you've done that for a lot of people so in context of this story Michelle put us together and we spent a little bit of time together on the phone and very very quickly within minutes it felt like Dolores was just right there in the room with us. And it, it was very clear that she was right there. And she was saying things in the way that only Dolores Cannon can say them. And I even, do you remember this part? I'm sure you do. I even basically said, okay, I'm going to test you now. And I asked you some questions. <laughs> and you were so sweet because your energy is so sweet and kind. And, and your reaction was a little bit like, Okay, I don't do kind of well with testing. I stop hearing so well when I'm being tested. I'm like, I can't help it. I got to test you. <laughs> and I test, test out a couple of things, including, and my favorite one was, and I won't go into the detail, but I asked you a question that even I didn't know the answer to. And then when it was all over, I took that answer to the person who did know the answer. And only three people, including Dolores, who's gone. So only two other people on the planet Earth knew the answer to this question. And you nailed it. You, you didn't even take that answer like out of my head. You absolutely were connected to Dolores Cannon and that for me sealed everything. I mean, just, I'm, it already was. So you have this, now this uh, connection with Dolores and everyone, uh, I know your community is so amazing. I mean, you, you connect with all kinds of beings, uh, all kinds of deities, um, um, Yeshua and uh, Mary Magdalene and, and, and many others. And, um, but you know my community in general and and specifically is very interested in now this relationship that seems to uh, be blossoming uh, between you and Dolores and so I you know I, I love the fact that we have um, we have a good amount of time to, to sit here and talk about these things and in some ways you know I could we could do this all day all night there's so many things I could ask but I, I want to start with some basics uh, if that's okay with you. Has Dolores talked about to you specifically what her existence is like right now and what she's focusing on and what she's doing, um, how it was different from what she might have thought or read about? You know, what's the current expression of Dolores Cannon doing right now? Well, it's obvious that she's in spirit form working with us. She's working with her practitioners. She's continuing her work. Um, except that she has said to me, I want to go beyond what I taught. I want to take it a hundred steps further and I want to continue to take it that way. So she is just expanding upon it in such depth. Um, she's interested in the human brain, in all metaphysical concepts. She is interested in quantum physics at this point. She calls in with me a lot of different scientific, deceased science, scientists, <laughs> um, particularly Dr. Emoto, Einstein, and Tesla. She is fascinated with my work because I had channeled Tesla prior to her. Um, he is absolutely neurotic, even from the grave, and just as insistent as she. 
and um, except more neurotic. <laughs> she is much more grounded <laughs> and stable. <laughs> Um, he is absolutely very much in his uh, fourth dimensional form. She is very much in her fifth dimensional form. That's really interesting. Now, would they have and did they connect before you? You know what I mean? Like, did the connection with Tesla and Dolores come because you were speaking with him or were they already connected and then together? I mean, how's that work? Um, she was connected with Emoto prior to me. She made that clear that she connected with him almost right away. There was a significance in their um, timing within their physical deaths. And she connected with him almost right away because she's interested in nanoparticles. Um, she's interested in uh, molecules. She's interested in water. She um, just came through in so many ways, you know, to so many of her practitioners about making certain that they were drinking water and now she wants to study water in a way that allows her to study the human brain, you know, because we are currently made up of 60 plus percent water in our bodies. And she feels like that's very significant. Um, she feels that humans are ignoring their bodies. She wants practitioners to know a lot of different things about making sure that they drink water before and during their session. She wants to make sure that, um, it is sort of a, the way she puts it in is garbage in garbage out. She wants to make sure that their bodies are pure, that they're eating properly. It's something that she wished that she had explored a little bit further when she was in human form with the eating properly thing. And sometimes when I sit down for meals, she goes, you know, that's gonna, you're not going to be so clear in your next channeling if you eat that. So, um, <laughs> You know, because I love food and I, and I struggle. I'm like, yeah, I want to eat that. You know, and she's like, no, nah, you really don't. Because <laughs> we're going to be doing some heavy work tonight. And, and in order to remain clear in the subconscious, your body has to be just as pure. So she has enlightened me to the fact that spiritually speaking, the theme of this year is purification for both the, the body, the mind, and the spirit. Um, she wants to teach us how to work um, well, us being a loose term, I'm not a practitioner. I need to make that clear. But she wants to teach everyone in general what she has learned both from me and what she is learning um, from beyond the veil here, that one can get equal results in all levels of consciousness. So if you, for instance, have your client um, slip out of some emulistic state and go back into beta or alpha even, that you can work in those states. You can work with very resistant clients and um, and you can do so in a way that reestablishes trust in an instant, like very, you know, very, very quickly. And the key to doing that is what she's teaching me right now is understanding um, the cell membranes in humans. And this is why she is bringing in so many scientists. Um, and she recently woke me up at 3.33 a.m. That seems to be something there with threes and fives. She either will come in at 3.33 or 5.55, you know, something like that with the threes and the fives. And she will awaken me and, and bring in all of these beings. And she didn't know Tesla or, or Einstein in terms of spiritually speaking. She, she met them through me you know, because I was attempting to channel. Einstein wouldn't have anything to do with me based upon my lack of mathematical prowess, according to him. He would tell me to write down massive equations. And I would say, you want me to write down what? I don't know what that is. <laughs> so he and I are still kind of um, ha having our little spiritual differences uh, with how our brains operate <laughs> because I'm not learning math anytime soon. Um, but he will come when she shows up. So he would only talk to me if she was there and then she would pull in a moto. So I didn't speak to him pr prior to speaking to her. She brought him in. That it's just so astounding that this idea that, you know, in the middle of the night you are bringing some of the heavyweights of the planet Earth's history into your home for like these, you know, these uh, brainstorming kind of ideas of brains, that you'd be, but you know, they don't even have brains. So, I mean, there's so, right? I mean, there's no brains there. I mean, not physical brains, but obviously there's a thinking process going on wherever it is that they are. And that, and they still retain some personality but there's, um, there's obviously some differences, and, and just like what you said about uh, Tesla being a little neurotic, a little more in the fourth dimension, and Dolores being, she's kind of let go some of, some of more of her ego stuff and is in the higher fifth dimension. These are 
these are just kind of amazing things to talk about. And it makes me ask a question very basic, like, so when you're not, you know, hearing this conversation and being in the room where all of this is happening, are they working themselves together in other ways and other times? And so like Dolores is sitting at the feet of Einstein learning. Is that the way that's working? Um, they're all learning from each other. She's a very, very wise soul. And she did not know this. She would have never called herself a spiritualist. Um, she was more of a researcher, she tells yeah. me. Um, she never called herself a medium for sure. <laughs> uh, she made that clear, you know, in our first few conversations. Um, but she calls herself uh, a researcher and a record keeper. She, she's called herself a historian. Uh, yeah, she's used many different terms. And, and she says, I am observing. She says that phrase a lot. I'm, I am observing and reporting back to you what I'm observing and she was fascinating with me based upon my ability to travel through the Akasha. So she and I have those distinct characteristics wherein in her techniques she um, was guiding her clients through um, in a very quantum fashion through many many what humans call past lives and I believe that everything is happening simultaneously. Um, I don't believe in past lives but I believe in the records. I call them Akashic records. And when she met, she said, oh, it's the same thing. And, and I, I see now how it's happening simultaneously. And I began to see that in my, my work when I was alive as well. So she and I had that meeting of the minds and of the spirits wherein she, um, she and I agreed that nothing was happening in the past and the past doesn't exist and everything is happening now and being created in the now for the future. So she um, became very fascinated with how I was doing that and she became observing me and then I be began observing her practitioners and she began teaching me via all of you coming to me and as I was reading you and just sort of going into your own records about how you operate in your sessions, it taught me so much and then she would pop in during your sessions with me. <laughs> You know, as a medium, you would come to me and all of you would come to me and she would pop in and say that, yeah, this is what I was telling you about this part of my technique. And this is what I was teaching you about that part of my technique. And it just all began to come together. But when she sent me you, I remember you sent me a message and she goes, this is going to be a difficult one. <laughs> she said, but you meant if you can, if you can get past her resistance of what you do and I will help you then the two of you have some grand work to do for me here. And I said, oh, okay, resistance. I work with that daily. I'm not afraid of it, but how are you going to make sure that I get past? What if I mess it up, you know? Because, uh, yeah, I'm good at what I do, but I, I, I have humility about it. I realize that I could mess up. And she goes, no, I'll be there every step of the way. I'm like, oh, you better be, because she's going to test me. <laughs> Well, then that's true. And, and, and for those of you out there who may not know me or anything, uh, you know, I met Dolores in 2008 and I, you know, I think I've known her many, many other uh, lifetimes and in other ways. Uh, I have been intensely 100% loyal to Dolores Cannon from the moment that I met her and I felt very protective of, of the person and of her work and now of her legacy. Uh, none of that has changed. None of it. Uh, it's only strengthened actually since meeting Pamela. And so this is such an exciting opportunity and I want to talk a little bit about how she is. Uh, just yesterday I had a, an amazing um, uh, coaching call with another practitioner who is brand new, who's never even met Dolores in real life, who took um, you know, the class via some, you know, videotapes and et cetera that Dolores um, has out there for her to learn her method. And she said this to me, she has done about 20 sessions so far only, but which was actually quite a bit considering when she took the class. But this is what she said to me. Dolores has been in every single one of her sessions, every single one participating there. And for somebody that new to Dolores's work and method to make a statement like that. Um, you know, we have uh, several hundred practitioners in our um, support form, the original support form for Dolores Cannon's method. And 
Um, we get lots of stories every day about how Dolores shows up and sometimes Dolores shows up in our lives and very often, of course, in these sessions and, and for me too. Um, and for me in my dreams and early in the morning, I can hear Dolores and, and I was asking, you know, the whole time and I still kind of ask, you know, Dolores, you said you would never let anyone channel you. And she used the same phrase that she used with you. You're just listening to me. And I'm like, you know, once again, we're kind of uh, thwarted with words and terms and language. So, you know, we try to, to use these words to describe what, what is going on. But, um, and Dolores has even, we have stories, amazing stories out there. Uh, one I'm thinking of right now, this woman who, I think she might have lived on the East Coast or something. She wakes up from a dream where she's dreaming about this woman and this woman is saying, my name is Dolores Cannon and you need to find one of my practitioners. And this woman wakes up and she's so stunned by the dream and how it ended. And she's like, Dolores Cannon. And she goes on the internet and she, she goes and, and, you know, she looks it up and she researches who might be close by to her. She picks up the phone and calls a practitioner and says, um, I, I, do you do Dolores Cannon's method and then tells the story? She knows nothing about anything. But Dolores comes to, you know, so this is a, something else that's so interesting. Dolores, um, I personally believe Dolores changed the world. I believe she changed humanity. I believe her work in some ways, we don't, we don't even have the slightest idea of how important her work is and how it will expand. And, and the woman really changed the course of humanity. And then she of course, uh, passed away in um, 2014, October of 2014. But as this information comes through from you and from practitioners and in dreams and through the public and through synchronicities and other things like that, what it seems like to me is the immense impact that she has made uh, for humans uh, with a physical life on earth now she's on the other side of it and she it's it seems like she wants to now mirror that immense work from that side coming back through the veil on the other side and i find this astounding and very very exciting i would love to know if she's talked to you about anything like that kind of specifically about what it's like to be over there uh and what it is she kind of hopes to accomplish and how it kind of maybe fit into a larger picture. Do you have any sense of that? It seems so grand and so big. She has stated to me that the reason why she's fascinated with my work um, is because what she has seen on the other side of the veil incorporates a theory that when you operate in three levels of your brain, from the opening of the pineal gland to the pituitary, to calming down the fight or flight response in the hypothalamus that between those three areas of the brain that you can gain access to the cell membranes, which is when Emoto came in and began to talk to her. And then Emoto said in a recent channeling between she and Tesla and Einstein and myself, he said, um, in my book, the cell membrane is just as important as the nucleus, yet the nucleus gets all the credit. And I want to teach otherwise. And then this is when she began to talk about how water purification, um, de detoxification, honoring the mind, body, and spirit, honoring the physical um, would be so important because what she noticed is that when you are operating in a pure body form, you can get the same results. And then you step into many parallel earths, many parallel existences. So when you're operating in conscious, the upper levels of the conscious, the alpha, the beta, the lower levels of the conscious, the theta, the upper levels of the soul, and then the soul, the deeper level of the somnambulistic self, um, you're accessing different dimensions in those moments. And she travels through those dimensions via thought forms. All she has to do is switch thought, turns into a higher frequency, and she goes there. That's how she's described it to me. So the veil isn't earth, boom, you're here. It's <laughs> levels of the brain indicate levels of your, your higher consciousness indicate the levels of dimensions through which you can travel. And you're already accessing all that in your human form in the way that she's teaching her work 
now, but not so much then when she was alive, but now the way that she teaches it to me. Um, you can access many dimensions while living, which speeds up your rate of what humans call ascension. She is calling it a quickening. You know, Dolores paid, um, and anybody who takes her class or who has taken her class ever, uh, she paid a lot of attention and, and made it very, uh, a, a big part of her work to talk about taking her clients to the somnambulistic state. And it's a perpetual um, notion, if you will, right now, uh, both in practitioners and clients, that that's the only place where anything happens, where healing happens, where Dolores' method works. And that if they aren't in this somnambulistic state, some clients, you know, even though we talk to them about retaining conscious memory of their experience or whatever, there's a lot of people who basically, and I hate to make it seem so crass and boil it down to this, but it, it kind of is. They, they want to come, they want to lay down, they want to go under so deeply that it's almost like anesthesia. They want all their problems fixed while they're down. They want to sit up, they want it all to be over, and they think that's somnambulistic state, that's Dolores Cannon's method, and then when they walk out the door, you know, all their problems are gone. And we as practitioners have to deal with that. Now, does that ever happen? Well, yeah, I've seen that happen, but it doesn't happen for everyone at all. There's, uh, as you say, there's all these different layers. And is that one of the ways that the planet and life and humanity, is that one of the things that has changed? Because I, there's, there's a big, big change from when, like you said earlier, when Dolores was alive and on the planet and now there are things happening in sessions that i maintain and maybe you could ask her as i'm saying this dolores i've been saying things are happening in our sessions right now that didn't even happen in your sessions and if they did you didn't tell anybody about it but there's stuff happening to us now practitioners who sit in that energy who follow your work who do this that we're like that's never happened before and um, we're needing to navigate that and yes, go beyond her teachings right now and having this communication and this conversation with her is so golden for all of us and for humanity itself. And we look forward to, um, you know, creating a better session experience for everybody and life in general better. But um, what does she have to say about that? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, she has a lot to say about that. One of the, the reasons why she allowed me to speak with her is because um, my process works in all levels. And she was noticing as I was stating the different levels of the brain that you can access, and that would bring you into different dimensional planes of existence, which means you have more access to your Akasha. You have more access to your records you know, your lifetimes, if you will. So with that being say, stated, um, she became interested because my work is uh, a bit of an expansion from the work of Byron Katie. I have a process called the resistance process, and she was fascinated with it because she noticed that clients would come to me and they're in a very resistant alpha state where in their inner critic space, their brain, not their mind, but their brain was on overdrive and it created so much fear. And she is interested in getting past fear so that the client can trust. And she goes, how are you doing that? How are you doing that so quickly? So she, <laughs> she wanted to learn my techniques about how to get past the inner critic. And, um, and I said, well, you must study this, but you also must study the work by Byron Katie, <laughs> you know, and, and she'd already knew, she already knew from being here. She was very familiar with it and, and very much in honoring of Byron Katie, but she, um, she simply wants to tell people how to get past the inner critic further and how to understand and follow the lead of the client even more so than what you as practitioners are doing. So for instance, don't try to put them back in the somnambulistic state is what she's saying right now. When they slip out of it, there is a reason and it is your job as a practitioner to discern that reason ah. and follow their emotions and to pull them into their fear state and then help them instantly release their fear, quickly release their fear, formulate a new technique, to release their fear, to pull them out of fight or flight response from the hypothalamus and to activate other areas of their brain so that they get out of fear. And then you can go back in if they choose. 
Mm -hmm. So there are many ways that it's different. That's just brilliant. I know that you, um, you did a little fear process thing on your, on your Facebook page yesterday that was, that was so brilliant. And um, just so to expand upon that a little bit, Pamela and, and some other people are noticing this in other works as well, but Pamela did it so brilliantly. I like the way you uh, brought the wild animal in. You know, I'm, I live out here on the farm and I deal with many animals and Pamela was talking about there's that moment when you see, you know, you are here and you're the wild and you lock eyes. There's that moment before there isn't, there's no fear yet. There's like this, an assessment. And from that point, you can, um, you can negotiate, you can navigate, you can, you don't have to, you don't have to fall into fear. There's, 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 you know, you can, you can override that flight or, uh, fight instinct. And as you were saying too, you know, now if you're, if you're out walking, <laughs> you know, in a place where there are animals who might want to eat you, you need to leave that kind of on, at, to keep yourself safe. But in general, we don't need that um, in our day-to-day -day lives if we're not in a, you know, in a war zone or uh, really uh, afraid about our physical uh, body. And it, just a really beautiful way of looking at that, that you actually have the opportunity to change it, but you have to do it quickly, right? Very quickly. Very quickly. Um, and it is by focusing on the pranic breath. So this is something that yogis teach in India. So this is older than all suns. <laughs> so basically speaking, you breathe in through your nose, exhale through your mouth. Um, you repeat a mantra that is older than all galactic levels of anything that has ever existed. And it is, I am of God. Let me get back into it because she's the one who helped me channel that as well. <laughs> I am of God and I call back my power through the space of all time infinitum. And you just repeat that and it, it connects you to all your records all at once to release all fear because you're calling back your God center. And she's very, very connected to source. She's very much in her knowingness. She's not, she doesn't, she's not clairvoyant. She's not clairaudient. She's not really highly empathetic. Um, she is a knower. She's connected to her precognition and to, she has dreams. She did that when she was alive and she would remember them very clearly. She had a very succinct memory. Um, but she is, she is and was at that time in her human form, very, um, clear cognizant. So she clearly knew in her own way, she was a clear channel because she knew she didn't require the human senses to get into things. She just had a, yeah, this is how it is type of thing. Like a, she operated in downloads just like I do. And that's why she likes me because everything, even though I am clairvoyant, that doesn't come first. My knowing comes first and then everything else. I know. Then I hear cause I'm frequency oriented. Then I see once I hear and, and then I feel my empathy is last. So my in human emotions don't get the chance to come in and take over. So I want to just recap and make sure I heard you right. That statement of being connected to God and uh, uh, releasing fear and, and all that came from Dolores. It was partially channeled by her. Yeah. The, um, throughout the space of all time infinitum. <laughs> yeah. She, That's she, wonderful. yeah, I am of God. I've been saying forever and ever. I always say I am of God. And sometimes I'll say, and I ground myself to the earth. If I'm trying to calm down, that sometimes helps me struggle when I struggle with, with fears, but she's like, don't even worry about grounding yourself. If you want to travel through all dimensions, why are you trying to ground to earth? So she asked me to admit that. <laughs> Oh my and said, I like what you say about time and space. And she said, but you need all time and space infinitum because you are, if you're source, it's everything. Right. You, you like the word infinitum. That word came from, from her. Beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. I love the fact that you um, didn't know this woman as she existed in human form. And because because that it gives such credence to the authenticity of your connection with her. Um, when I took my class from Dolores, I was the demonstration subject. And, and from the moment I went there, I knew that my life was connected to her work 
uh, and backwards and forwards. There's so, so many different stories I can tell about that. But, but, you know, for me, it was, she was just, you know, my teacher incarnate, my, you know, and, and I saw her then again, several months later, and I ran up to her and I couldn't even help myself. I, I ran up to her and I just spontaneously hugged her and, and said, I was so happy to see her. <laughs> and she kind of went like this. She kind of like opened up and backed up and um, she said, you're squishing me. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you told me, you shared something with me about Dolores because you said she's popping in, you know, when you're doing some of your work. And, and, and there was a time, I think you shared this with me, if you would to tell our audience this, where, where you were hugging the, the client and she came in and she had something to say about that. Do you remember you telling me that? <laughs> she, I'm a hugger. When, and, and I am very, um, especially if I'm doing any in-person channelings, you know, if I do public events, um, that's something that people notice. About me. I will hug the entire room. There is no stopping to my hugging. Like I, I feel a little bit like Ama, you know, the hugging saint. Like I just want to hug everyone, you know, and she will pop in. She will. And, and she just, uh, I remember that moment. She said, um, what was it? She said, uh, you, you just get all up in their business. <laughs> the way she said it she said you need to empathically like cut off your empathy just a little bit so that you can remain maintain your clarity a little bit more she said if you are to be clear let your emotions come last well let's just talk a little bit more about how Dolores seems to be around so very much um, one of the things that I want to talk about is the fact and I've mentioned it already but here you and I are talking about Dolores Cannon in the way that, that we are talking about her in, in this very precise, very detailed um, manner and, and you being, you know, professional at what you do. Uh, but what I want to talk about just a little bit, even though we touched on it before, was that Dolores Cannon, because of where she is, is really spending a whole lot of time with her practitioners communicating in a lot of uh, the, the same sort of way. So even though this is amazing and this is exciting, for those of you out there who either knew and met Dolores and, and was um, you know, taught by her, or even those of you out there who just loved her and made a connection with her, and I know that there's so many of you out there who you know, get on the phone with me and say, you know, she just, touches me here and I feel like this great connection and there's sometimes there's a longing and there's a there's this thing that some people in the public do and they say I wish I would have met her when she was alive you know I didn't even find out about her until after she passed and what I've started to say is I was so blessed to spend as, as much time as I could with that woman in real life but you know what she's more accessible to me now she truly is more accessible to me now because she was in Arkansas and I'm here in Kansas and I didn't, you know, I didn't live there and I didn't get there except for, for classes and events and projects and such. And there was always busy times and lots of people who wanted Dolores Cannon's attention when I was able to be over there. I never, you know, kind of had her one-on-one uh, -on -one or not, not very often anyway. Those are very special, special times. So what I've said to practitioners and, and other people alike is, she's more accessible now. You have more access to her now. And um, I think she's, she's intensely, tell me if I'm, you know, if I'm getting this right or what she says about this. <coughs> One of the things that I like to say is who else but Dolores Cannon is figuring out how to come back through from the other side and speak to us as clearly as she is doing. With all of the work that she did for the decades that she did to reach through time this way, she's now coming through this way and, and speaking and, and, and communicating with us all, for me, a lot of times in dreams, but a lot of times just in my head as well. Um, she, you know, she famously, spoke to the living Nostradamus, meaning he wasn't on the spirit side, meaning he wasn't, um, you know, beyond the veil. He was living a physical life, and somehow through her method uh, and through multiple people, she was able to communicate with somebody 
in it through quantum time like this. And I've always known from the bottom of my heart that it's this communication that she, the gift to the world, you know, she calls herself a historian. She calls herself a reporter, all of those things. Yes. But to teach us how we too can uh, talk through this, these veils and these dimensions with other people, no matter where they are, with other beings, no matter where they are, some of what you're doing right now. So she was so brilliant at doing that when she was a human. And now that she's on the other side, she's doing that. She's helping us understand how the communication can go back and forth. And this is the exciting part. And this is a part of what this going beyond quantum healing is all about. And some of the information that's coming through to you out there, you in the public and you practitioners out there, she is talking to you and we are gathering that information. We're comparing notes. We're seeing where, where we're going to go uh, from here. But uh, anything you want to add about that yeah and about the the um the pure body state the more water you drink the cl the clearer you can hear her uh the more pure your body is the the more you can hear her and she actually it, she, she like made me she, I, I was a red wine drinker up until just recently i loved my organic red wine and she basically said no you're just gonna not do that anymore <laughs> If you want to do this project, you're just not going to drink that red wine anymore. You can take that time where you're sitting having a glass of wine and you can start writing these books. <laughs> so, um, you know, this communication from the other side and, and with Nostradamus, anything you might want to talk about that, especially actually Nostradamus and what she might have said about that, what you might know about Nostradamus because there's more there than we can possibly know. And what and when I when I say that, I don't mean his prophecies. I don't mean his quatrains. I, I, I you know, set that aside for right now. Um, it's the way they spoke. It's the way they communicated. It's the, you know, it's the telephone line or the communication method, if you were, that I've always thought was the really important, amazing thing here. And I think he's a key to some of what's going on here. What do you have to say? What does Dolores have to say about that? Um, she is stating to me that he had many, many different resources and ways to speak through different planes of existence, hence why he could prophesy so clearly. He could you know, predict things so clearly and that he was predicting something based upon a moment, you know, a thought process that occurred in human time. And that what she has learned from this existence, now that she's on the other side of the veil, understanding that there is no time, that she can tap into a grid system within the human brain and operate there in the way that he did. She is understanding how humans can do that within the matrix system of the brain. And you do that by purification. You do it by detoxification. You do it by being in alignment and balance with your mind, body, and spirit. And then you know yourself. She said, you know thyself. That's something Nostradamus taught her. Know thyself. That's what she repeats constantly. So one of the things that Dolores has been saying is the more water you drink, the more pure your consciousness um, messages coming from the higher levels of your consciousness is. The more you want to access other realms, uh, whether they be um, communications with your own higher self, with communications with your soul family and others, whether you want to speak with some of the divine greats or the ascended masters, this is your friend. <laughs> so one of the things we as practitioners uh, of Dolores Cannon's method of quantum healing used to say uh, for years and years is we used to, uh, you know, we used to actually kind of limit the water that our clients would drink before a session. And Dolores came through. She, she and Emoto have come through in my dreams more than once. What, one of my favorite dreams was they were doing the can-can on a stage. <laughs> and, and Dolores was showing me that when they were kicking, you know, you know when you do the can-can like that, they, they, they were kicking through the curtain. Mm -hmm. And that meant because they left together, they were, because of their, their combined force, like the leg kicking through the curtain, basically they're parting some of the veil for us. That was my dream. 
And, and so she talks a lot about water and the more water, you do, she's like, you cannot, you, you can't ruin a session or really by drinking too much water. You can only access more. And you know what? I'm starting to hear her. <laughs> and, and am I even hearing you, Moda? You tell me because I, I've now, this is the third time I've gotten this, this hit to, to mention this concept. Remember how you were talking about the cell membrane and everything? And isn't that, um, you know, the membrane holds the whole cell and it resists anything infiltrating it. But that's, um, I wonder, is there some sort of connection there with the idea of, of resistance? You know, resistance and a cell membrane? Or am I just making this up? No, you're not. Right. She has described that to me before. Um, Mr. Thomas had very little resistance. What came through was clear. That's why she liked studying him so much. And he came through. And she described to me that he came through in many of her, you know, sessions. And, and she, that he came through. Okay, so I'm going to have to repeat what I just said because there's this interesting thing that happens for those of you who follow my work. It, so many people have said to me, Pamela just buy a professional microphone. And I'm like, believe me, I have. And thanks to all of you, you supported and donated to that regard. We have professional microphones, but what happens is if a very strong presence comes through and my microphone is used to Dolores, so it doesn't happen with her very often, but Nostradamus was coming through at the same time as she was and that kind of distorted everything. So I'm gonna have to repeat what I just said. Um, she was describing to me and then he came through simultaneously to describe to me how um, the reason why she kept connecting to him via her practitioners having sessions um, about lifetimes with him. And she had sessions where she was coming through, where he was coming through to her as well, um, is because he had a specific way of working with the cell nucleus. So, you know, within that component, he was able, you know, to work with the cell nucleus so strongly and to connect via energy and resonance and light. So when clients were tapping in so clearly in a deeper state, that's resonance, that's light. That's the resonance of light. Wow, so he was coming through to participate in this, this conversation. You know, for those of you out there who don't know, it, it's my understanding that it worked like this. Uh, Dolores had a client who was laying on a bed who was in a deep trance state and she was talking to this client who uh, at first was just talking to the Nostradamus but then Nostradamus used that client's voice to speak back to Dolores and the fascinating thing is is uh, in general I believe what Nostradamus was doing was scrying he was looking into actually uh, a very, um, oh, now I'm going to lose the name. It's the black shiny rock. What is the black shiny mineral? Um, anyway, he had a big, big one of those and he would look into obsidian. Um, I just left my head for a second. Um, and Dolores on her desk, her work desk, had a big piece of black obsidian, which I just found so amazing. So imagine, if you will, that state. Um, Nostradamus is meditating or in his own trance looking into a piece of black obsidian and Dolores has a client who's in a trance state but basically they're using those two things the obsidian and the client like a telephone they were just talking to each other mm -hmm. back and forth like that and, and and a lot of people will talk about Dolores and her Nostradamus work and say well you know you know, her theory on, and, and Dolores didn't have really a theory about Nostradamus at the time. She literally was saying, okay, and here's this quatrain, da, da, da. what did that one mean? And then he just told her directly. So all those books out there about Nostradamus, you can just, you know, put those on the back of the shelf because Dolores asked him directly. There isn't any, Dolores wasn't formulating any theories. She wasn't putting her spin on anything. She just said, tell me. And he told her, and that's what it was. So putting the quatrains and Nostradamus in history aside, wouldn't you like to be able to talk like that? Right? Um, well, it's quite clear when you keep your brain membrane with the cellular membrane clear, then the nucleus becomes just like that of Nostradamus, like a scrying glass. His brain was this way. It wasn't just about the obsidian as a tool. That was a metaphor. Wow. 
um, it, it represents the clarity of the clear conduit channel, which we all can have, not just me. Yes, I was born with it, but it's, it's not just me. Any of us can have it. And it's very, very simple. It's about keeping the cellular membrane um, clear. And that's what she's coming through. And that's why she's coming through with Tesla and Emoto and all these, you know, heavy hitters in the scientific communities because she is learning from them and they are teaching her much in the way that Nostradamus was able to come through. He used his own resonance. Um, resonance combined with the proper amount of clarity within frequency is the key to being able to step through dimensional existences from all levels of consciousness. This is mindfulness and this is what she wants to teach. So when Tesla came through to me in a conversation to her recently, um, he s described it as membranes being a dynamic structure, the cellular membranes in the wall, that, that that's a dynamic, changeable structure. And what she was saying back to me was, and that how you keep that pure is by purifying your thoughts, purifying your body, um, purifying your emotions. So you operate now from the heart center. This is why clients are unable to stay in the somnambulistic state is because they are afraid. If they are afraid, they're in conscious resistance. If they are in conscious resistance, um, they are slipping out and coming back into alpha or beta. You know, so with that being stated, if you want to keep them there, if you want to, you know, you can perform certain purifications first, fasting for up to six hours. That's something that she's made very recently clear. And she doesn't mean, and she said, you have to do that based upon your own health. Obviously diabetics can't do as much of that. Um, but she said fasting in a way that honors what your body needs by listening to what food your body actually wants, you know, and drinking plenty of water, getting plenty of rest, making sure your brain has had rest prior to going, you know, into, you know, a quantum healing hypnosis session. But because these cellular membranes, according to Tesla, in the, in the, the, the brain wall here, um, or the brain membranes, it's like a warehouse, like a storehouse. And depending upon that client's perspective, you are slipping in and out of different states based upon the condition of the cellular membrane. So the cellular membrane is permeable and it's allowing you to slip in and out of different states of consciousness, which will be very helpful for the practitioner. That's why she is connecting me to these scientists even more so than I was before, because there is a fine tuning of the way that the molecules can be received and expelled. And it's amazing in its complexity to learn about, but um, we can't, according to what Emoto stated to me recently, we can't use the brain analogy fully in reference to the nucleus as being the only thing that does anything. That's very limiting. The brain is its own little permeable thing. And she wants to get up in there with science and spirit and understand from all perspectives how practitioners can develop her process further um, by understanding the human brain and working within it clearly. Gosh, there's, you know, that topic alone um, could take us into some really deep, deep territory. But um, I want to ask about that. So are you, um, and I want to ask you something about, I'm saying this out loud to remind myself something you said that she said about the spine as well before, but are you saying that this knowledge about the cell membrane, is that... Um, so, so when we hold memories or when we hold diseases or when we hold fear or when we hold all of that stuff, it's literally held within the cell. And what we're talking about is releasing that through the cellular wall. It, is that what we're talking about? And, and we do that through uh, resonance and light and some other ways like that. Am I framing this as you understand it? She has stated to me before, going back to your question about the spine, that the, um, the tailbone and the seat of the spine there at the base of it is, um, she calls it the seat of wisdom. So basically speaking, that's what many um, people in the spiritual communities know as Kundalini energy, Kundalini rising. There's many different terms that people have, um, you know, denoted. However, when you are operating 
within the brain matter as well, the pineal gland, the pituitary, and the hypothalamus, how you awaken them simultaneously is by understanding how to operate within the cell membrane because it is so permeable and understanding when the client is switching in and out of different conscious states based upon their emotional state, their level of trust, their level of resistance. If fear comes up, um, whatever happens, they're going in and out of different levels and their cell membrane is um, not properly functioning. And you can tell what dimensional state of existence that they are slipping into based upon um, if they're coming in and out of somnambulistic state, if they're not going in at all, if they're stepping through fear, you can tell based upon how deep you're going um, exactly where they are. And if you operate within certain levels of the consciousness, then you are healing that particular portion of the brain, which is allowing all levels of the pineal, the pituitary and the hypothalamus to open up. Um, in that session, you are detoxifying and helping that client right away. Beautiful. Um, I, I see that. So, so what you're really to encapsulate that is, you know, all of these levels are important and to only focus on the deepest level and to say that the session wasn't great or not successful. If you couldn't get there, the client may not, be able to go there or simply needs to have healing on some of these other levels. Am I rephrasing that correctly? Yeah. And they may not be ready for the somnambulistic state. That is a very deep level of healing that if you push towards trying so diligently to get them and keep them in that state, then you're missing something really important because when the cell membrane is operating and the client is, is drifting in and out of alpha and beta states of their mind and they're not going where you want them to go when you are the practitioner, it's because the cell membrane does these things, and this is something that Emoto taught me, which are equal to the nucleus. The nucleus is the state that operates within the somnambulistic. That's the deeper levels of the subconscious. That's the cell nucleus. Uh, okay, so when you're going in and out of different levels of alpha, uh, alpha and beta state of consciousness, you're operating in different um, membranes and different levels of the cell membrane. So for example, the proteins in the outer membrane can react, you know, to concentrations of many organic compounds and ions outside. Ions are controlled by resonance, which is controlled by frequency, which is controlled by emotion. So with that being said, when you clear your ions by doing your job properly, preparing for the session, both of you physically, mentally, spiritually, you are letting those ions do their jobs. Wow. Well, I think we've only just started to scratch this subject. And I know we're, we're coming down to where we're uh, going to be out of time for you because you've got a busy day in front of you with clients. Um, is there any sort of uh, parting message Dolores would like to tell us? Um, first off, will you do this with us again, please? Uh, I would be honored oh, yeah. so and what she's stating is she said I would like for you to trust your intuitive notions as practitioners I would like for you to trust your intuitive notions she said one of you specifically um, came to the session with an immense back problem um, and then she's talking to you and she said you with the intense back problem that couldn't sit still and you're male she said, um, when you came to the practitioner and, and there was a reclining seat that was involved that helped the spine relax, then you opened up the seat of knowledge here at the base of the spine when you, re when you recline the client, that that's helpful. And then some clients are not there. They haven't opened up different levels of the cell membrane that operate from the heart center. So you have to keep them more in an upright position. Follow the client and follow yourselves. Very interesting. That's amazing. Pamela, uh, you wanted to mention that, you know, clients can contact you to have this kind of conversation with Dolores or really with anybody. Um, tell us a little bit about how that works and how people can get a hold of you to be able to have this kind of amazing session with you on their very own. You may find me at aurareader.com. That's A-U-R-A -A, reader, R-E-A-D-E-R.com. Um, we channel her live all the time in my spiritual community on Facebook. So if you want to be a part of those channelings and posts where she just pops in and she does it pretty frequently, join the Facebook community. It's, it's, it's just facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash or reader. 
um, you can email us as well from my website to schedule any session that, that you choose. Yeah. And Dolores will, you know, talk about big things and she'll talk about personal things. And I'm going to take this opportunity to just hold up this picture. So Dolores showed this picture when uh, Pamela was talking to me about this. This is my, this is my mother's hands. Her memorial is this coming Saturday. These hands here are my daughters. And when we were talking about, and Dolores has actually been checking up on my mother who passed away just this past June, just a, a few months ago. Um, and, and she's in the resting place. And she was showing that particular photograph to, to Pamela and, and talking about the, the lineage and the family and the hands and, and everything. And I happened to show that photo to Pamela last night when we were testing out the Zoom interface. And Pamela was like, oh, and I had even forgotten that you had said that. So the point I want to make is, you know, Dolores can come through and talk about big cosmic things. And she can also talk about very personal things in your family. She has access to all kinds of information and Pamela has access to all kinds of deities and beings and your own higher self and other people's soul family and all of that. And she's an amazing woman and an amazing friend. And I highly recommend uh, spending time with Pamela. And we are lucky enough, um, those in the um, support forum community, Dolores's original support forum community to, uh, have an upcoming meeting with Pamela on the 24th of September here in 2016, where several, uh, actually quite a number of practitioners are gathering in the Kansas City area. And we're going to talk to you and bring questions as a group of practitioners to you and Dolores at that time that Saturday morning. And we are truly looking forward to that. And for those of you out there who are looking for a practitioner of Dolores's method in your neck of the woods, you can go to Dolores Cannon QHH. Com. That's Dolores Cannon, QHHT.com, or you can contact me, and I practice in Kansas, and that's NewEarthJourney.com. And I want to thank, of course, uh, Pamela and Jim behind the scenes who's helping us put this together for joining me today. And I, as always, I want to thank Greg Prescott and Michelle Walling and those at N5D for supporting this show, Quantum Healing with Candace. You are changing the world yourself over there, um, my dear friends. And we're going to come see you uh, speak at the N5D uh, Psychics Conference uh, coming up next month. I, I get to hug you in person. I'm very excited about that. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much, Pamela. I love you. I love you. Bye, everyone. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs>